Hey guys, this is Eric and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about pet peeves or things that bother me. I know this is not a very serious video and it's a safe space for negativity. Like we're going to talk about the things that annoy me and I feel like maybe you're going to find them annoying too. Maybe you don't. Maybe some of these are irrational. But I wanted to share with you this funny video of things that really get me going. Like, no. <laughs> so let's start with number one. My number one pet peeve is a question. It's a question I get asked almost every single day. And most of the times when I get asked this question, I'm able to handle it really, really well. I don't go in a rant. And... I'm like, cool, we did it. So the question is, what's your Snapchat? I know, it doesn't seem like a big deal. But whenever someone asks me that, I'm just like, I'm I'm not there. I don't use it. And like, I can easily tell them like, hey, I use WhatsApp or here's my number. I feel like that's great. But if for some reason they ask me, why are you not on Snapchat? or you should be on Snapchat or something like that. I would be on a rant. I'll go from zero to 100, rant mode on, and I'm going to tell you why I'm not on Snapchat, why I hate Snapchat, why I'm the number one hater, and why Snapchat is everything that's wrong with the world. I'm like, no, I can't handle it. Like, I can't handle it. And it's something that I don't get about, like, current culture, whatever. I feel like what are people doing on Snapchat? Like the whole idea of the application bothers me. Uh, the last thing that I want to be doing is sending disappearing messages. Like I want to meet a stranger. I want to connect. I want to make you my friend. And I feel like disappearing messages, it's not the right way. I find them also insulting. I know this is crazy. <laughs> Why do I find disappearing messages insulting, I'll tell you. It's like an environment of distrust because why can't I keep your message? Like if you're telling me something, why does it need to disappear? What am I going to do with this information? Why does it need to go away, right? So the whole concept of you sending me a message goes away. By the way, I don't have the memory to be handling a stranger disappearing messages like that. And I just don't like that. Let's say that you send me a picture. It goes away. It I would like to see the picture again. I would like to see that video you sent me again. I would like to know what we were speaking about before. And all of this disappearing messages just annoy me. Like they annoy me and like I lose track of what I'm doing, who I'm talking to. Not to mention, People in Snapchat, they don't have like a profile picture. It's a cartoon. It's a cartoon. I'm like, how am I, I don't even know which James are you? At some point I had five James talking to me in Snapchat and I was like, which one's you? You know, I don't really know, right? So on top of that, like while I'm ranting about how I hate this disappearing messages and how this is an environment of distrust, they will tell me like, oh, but you can get to keep the messages if you press on the messages one by one. Does it seem like I want to do that? Does it seem like I want to press messages one by one to keep them on Snapchat? It's like, do we have applications that do that automatically already? Why do I have to do that? No, absolutely not. I feel like me talking about Snapchat, it's not a good way. So I feel like it just, it annoys me. Um, fun fact, I do have a Snapchat and people find out that I have it, um, which I find really funny. Um, they instinctively like add me. It's like the same username I have on Twitter. Um, but I don't know what to do. So I go on Snapchat every once in a blue moon because I feel like maybe I'm missing something. Maybe I'm going to get it. Maybe I'm going to get into the application or something. And no, I open the messages. They start disappearing. I lose track of what I'm doing. And I'm like, no, this is a nightmare. I'm leaving. Bye. You know, 
the only time that happens, and that always happens when I go to a club and someone's taking like a flash picture and they use the Snapchat to take it. Like, I feel like that's a great functionality. But other than that, don't ask me what's my Snapchat. You will get ranted. I'm sorry. <laughs> can't help it. I can't help it. My pet peeve number two is hyper punctuality. There are some people that want to be on time so badly that they will be 20 minutes early, 30 minutes early. And I feel like that's great. That's awesome if you're going to a doctor's appointment or something like that. But if you are coming to like a hookup appointment or a friendship appointment, someone's house, I think this is rude. I think this is crazy behavior because I need my time. I need, if I tell you, let's meet at five, you can't be here at 4.30. And some people do that. Some people show up at 4.30 and I'm like, I need to take a shower. I need to shave. There's no way I'm ready 30 minutes before the appointment. So I tell them, hey, see you at five. Like literally, you're, you'll stay at my door. I'm like, I'll see you at five. And I feel like that's crazy on my part because I I'll probably should let them like, oh, come in and wait for me while I do all these things. But in reality, I also will use the last five minutes are for me tidying up my apartment. So you don't want to see this disaster of, that is my apartment five minutes before the appointment. So I just feel like it's just not like maybe I want to sweep the floor. I don't know. Don't be so early. So I feel like it's better to be late than to be early. I feel like you should be like five minutes, 10 minutes late or on the dot. Like if you want to be on the dot, be on the dot, but don't be super early. Maybe five minutes early, it's okay. But I still believe that hyper punctuality bothers me. Like people that are like 20 minutes early, I'm like, you can't be here. I'm not here in my doorbell. I'm I'm not. I'm not, you can't be here. So I feel like sometimes people show up super early and that bothers me, especially if you're bottoming on that day. Oh my God. I'm using the last second. You can't show up to a bottom's place early. Like if you're douching, if you have to douche, no, like, no, I, I just don't get it. I don't get why some people feel like the need to be hyper punctual, even if I'm topping, like if I only need to take like shower and shave, I don't want you to be here super early. So let's work on that, guys. No. <laughs> My pet peeve number three is when people ask about someone else, like a different model, and they are talking to me because they really want to get to know me or something, but it's a disguise. They want to talk about someone else. They want to get to know someone else that's not answering their messages. That bothers me. Like, it's insane. Like, and then second I know that that's what you're trying to do, I'm like, I lost all my interest, but also I'm now annoyed because I'm not their secretary. You know, I feel like you should be contacting that person. And if that person doesn't want to talk to you, you should take a hint. You should take the hint. Like, I can't be the bridge that joins you and so and so. No. So I feel like sometimes someone's talking to you and like yada yada yada, but then you realize that they are talking and asking a lot of questions about one of your friends or about someone else, but they were initially interested in you. So I'm just like, what's going on? Why are you asking me all these questions about this person? And of course, they would at some point tell you, which bothers me. Like if I haven't even met you, they will tell you like, oh, we should do a threesome, you, me, and so-and-so. Really? No, we're not. We shouldn't do anything. You should be texting that person and getting their attention, but not through me. So I feel like it's low-key disrespectful to try and be sneaky like that, especially if you don't know me. Like if you're my friend or if we've met and if you guys are meeting and like you guys had a problem, whatever, I'll try to reach a person if something like a problem with your phone, whatever. But if you don't know that person and you're trying to get to know them the first time through me and you don't even know me, no, I don't like that. I really, it really bothers me. And I'm not jealous. I just feel like 
don't use me to get to someone else. Like it doesn't make any sense. Thank you. My pet peeve number five is super controversial. I know is a spicy food. I hate spicy food. There's nothing about spicy food that I like. Nothing, absolutely nothing. And, you know, I love flavor. I love spices. I love seasonings. I just don't like a spicy hot or spicy heat capsaicin, you know? So I don't get it. I don't get spicy food. I don't understand it in my head. I don't get why people would want to eat that. And in my head, I think that I judge people. I do. I'm terrible. I know. I'm sorry. I judge people if I see someone saying like, oh, I love spicy food. Spicy food is my favorite. Really? Really? Spicy food, is, what do you like about it? Tell us. What, what is it that you like? Is the pain? Is it the fire in your mouth? Like you love the feeling of lava in your mouth? I've seen the show Hot Ones. Have you seen that show? where they torture people with spicy wings for entertainment. What do you like about spicy food? Is it the acid reflux? What is it? I really want to know. I really want to know why do you like pain so much, right? You must be a masochistic person. And I don't trust you. We can't trust your taste buds, right? So why do you like spicy food so much? I feel like it's just crazy. Um, spicy food, I have a very low tolerance. If I have it in my system or if I like taste it, immediately anger. That's all I can feel. It's pure anger. It does something to my nervous system that I'm like, no, I can't. No, I can't choose this. Also, I feel like on gastronomy, I feel like out of all of the options that I have, flavors, seasonings, why would I choose painful food? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry. And I know that there are some cultures that have a lot of spicy foods and like whatever. And like they are like their gastronomy revolves around spicy food. Um, I'm sorry for you. I don't know what to tell you, but I really do not like spicy food at all. And I feel like it's I don't get it. I will never get it. And I feel like I feel like there's no way you can convince me, especially after watching Hot Ones that a spicy food is good for you. Oh, they say that spi- some people have died from eating spicy food. Did you know that? Can be healthy. So don't try to convince me. Don't try to tell me anything about it because the answer is no, absolutely not. It's the bottom of gastronomy. That's what I would say. I know, judging. <laughs> My pet peeve number six is something that a lot of us probably think annoying and is people that stand you up. I feel like it's it's just superhuman behavior. I feel like animals will be able to cancel an appointment. I feel like my dog, my cat would tell me, hey, can't make it. Woof. <laughs> but there are people that would make plans with you, wait until the very last minute, not show up or cancel at the very last minute. And I'm just like thinking, at, on some level, you should have known that this was not going to happen, that you would not be able to make it on time, and you couldn't update me or tell me something. Just tell me, can make it, or is I'm going to be late one hour. I totally can get all of those things, but I don't get people that just don't show up, and I know why they, why they do this. I feel like some people are so sneaky and so crazy that they believe that you're going to cancel on them. So they are waiting on the last minute so they don't have to be the ones canceling so that you cancel. Are you okay? Like, who told you I was going to cancel? It's like, if I made a commitment with you, I'm going to follow through. So I feel like subhuman behavior. Do not excuse this behavior. I feel like if someone stands me up, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to ask you, what happened? You know, did your phone blow up? The screen cracked, you know? Did someone cut off your hands? Were you in a coma? What happened? What happened to you that you were not physically able to cancel our appointment? Like, why did you stand me up? And if I'm not satisfied with the answer, I'm blocking you. Blocking you. I don't think you're human. I don't think you're normal. I feel like something's not clicking. 
and you need to bring that behavior to someone else. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. this is subhuman behavior. Do not make excuses for people that stand you up. And I feel like if you were like very strong about this, they'll stop. I'm telling you, the second you ask for the explanation, if the explanation doesn't satisfy you, you're, sh- you're like, you know what? No, not good enough. Goodbye. Do that to someone else. Just schedule this with someone else. Crazy. Bothers me so much. <laughs> My pet peeve number seven is when you get a DM from someone that has no pictures, no profile pictures, no pictures in their page, nothing. It's a blank profile. You don't know who's talking to you and you want to know before you continue the conversation. Unless you're sending me like a comment, like, hey, I love your work. I'm like, thank you. You know, if you're trying like, hello, I would like to get to know you or something like that. And you have no pictures. I would send you just one word. Pictures, question mark. And then I'm going to wait how you respond to this message. If you send me pictures after I send you this, I think you're normal. And I think you're just protecting your identity. And that's okay. Totally fine. I get it. If you send me words after I send you the word pictures, you are absolutely crazy. Yes, absolutely. I'm telling you. If you send someone the word pictures and they send you letters, words, not pictures, they're crazy. And my favorite is pictures of what? (laughs) What do you think? Tell me, what what do you think I would like to see pictures of what? I don't know. Your grandma? I don't don't know. Tell me, what do you think I would like to see pictures of? And I know that it's, you know, someone is probably want to think, you know, do you want to see spicy pictures or do you want to see pictures of me? Um, At this point, surprise me. Surprise me, but don't ask me pictures of what, because I would be like, you, what were you saying? What were you thinking? I do get this a lot. Don't get me so many times pictures of what? Wow. Twice. I had to ask you two times for your pictures. Already annoyed. Don't make me do that. Whatever you feel comfortable. Okay. So, but that's, there's not, that's not it. Some people would keep talking. You know, like as if you didn't ask them for pictures, you know, and to those ones, I might send them another message or like, a, you know, a reply that says pictures, you know, I'm trying to say, but I just feel like the people that are really cagey about sending pictures, if you see that I am completely out here with my pictures and videos out, don't make me wait. Like, I feel like cor- the courteous way to be is if you're messaging someone and you don't have any pictures, send one, you know, with the beginning, like, hey, this is me. Hello, how are you? And then I'll be like, hey, nice to meet you, whatever. But I feel like it's so much friction when you don't have pictures, the people ask you for pictures, and you're refusing to send them, and you're just like making it just harder, or like making them ask you multiple times, or like beg you for pictures. I feel like at this point, I am completely uninterested. There you go. So if you're going to message me and you don't have pictures and you make me ask you twice, I already think you're crazy. I don't know. I don't make the rules. That's what I'm telling you. (laughs) My pet peeve number eight is power moves. And I need to describe this. Like this is something that people agree to do something, but then they change their mind or people agree to be okay with something, but then they change their mind in the last minute at the very moment. And they want you to be okay with that. And I feel like at that point, I'm not okay with that. So I don't react really well to power moves because I feel like it affects the balance of the relationship. And as Kasadin says, the balance of power must be preserved. If you don't know League of Legends, you're not going to get that reference. But Sometimes, let's say that you are on a dating profile, on a dating, you know, app app or whatever, and you have on your profile, I like to do it with the lights on, right? And I'm looking for people that like to do it with the lights on. That sounds great. Sounds completely reasonable and sounds like you would get your matches and people that like to do it with the lights on will text you and be like, hey, I like to do it with lights on too. Let's meet. Let's hang out. Let's do it. Amazing. Wonderful. And be like, yay. Sounds amazing. But every once in a blue moon, 
someone will come and tell you, yes, I like to do it with the lights on. And you're like, oh, cool, I like it. That's exactly what I've been looking for. But when you meet, they tell you this. I'm not comfortable doing it with the lights on on the first time. I need to do it maybe in the future. I'll be more comfortable. And that's when we should do it. I'm not really comfortable. I need to do it with the lights off, actually. Then why didn't you find someone that likes to do it with the lights off in the beginning, if that's what you're comfortable with? Because that is not what I was looking for. And I was very specific. I say, I'm looking for someone that likes to do it with the lights on, not someone that is uncomfortable with this. Because now you put me in a position where I'm like either begging you to do this or forcing you to do this or something like that. I don't want to do that. I was very clear with my intentions on the type of people that I wanted to meet. And I feel like some people do this little power moves. And if you agree to that, then now what you wanted to do takes like a backseat or something. And they hold the power on when we're doing what you want to do. So I feel like the best way to navigate this situation, the second someone changes their mind or something like that, you need to stop right there and be like, you know what? Thank you so much. This is not a match. And I feel like you need to find your matches. And I shouldn't be wasting your time and you shouldn't be wasting mine. So I need you to leave my house. Thank you so much. And I feel like this is a little crazy. Obviously, I'm using the example of the lights, um, but it could be applied for anything. You know, let's say you're into feet or you're into making videos or whatever. I feel like you need to express clearly what you want and to be clear, right? And if you're not comfortable with something, just say you're not comfortable with it so that people can make that decision. And I feel like if you say that from the get-go, hey, I'm not comfortable with this, I want to do this, um, do you, are you okay with that? Then that's a different thing. This is a different situation where you now are deciding if that's something you want to pursue or not. But changing your mind last minute, I feel like this is crazy behavior and like it's very weird and it's manipulative um, and it's a power move. Whether you feel, you know, people are saying like, no, I'm just not comfortable. No. Mm -mm -mm. You should know this. You should know this. Otherwise, you're making someone be like the evil, the, the mean person, whatever, like is making you do something that you're not comfortable with. When that's what they had in their profile, it's, it doesn't make any sense to me. So the people that do this type of thing, like let's say you want to make a video and then they tell you in the spot, like, no, I don't want to make a video, leave my house. Not going to work. This is not going to work because that's what I, what we discussed and talked about. So me personally do not like this type of behavior. So block and release. Thank you so much though. My pet peeve number nine is something that a lot of people have gone through on some level is being catfish. I don't know why in 2024 people are doing this. Like I don't get it. I really don't. I would like to know what would possess someone to catfish another person, like send them pictures that are not of you. I've even been sent pictures of myself. Someone once tried cat someone several times. There's people that have sent me my own pictures and tell me like, hey, this is me. Really? Wow. <laughs> no, I feel like people should like stop the catfish behavior. This is so like crazy. Like, I don't know. Like it's 2024. Let's leave that behind. Let's use our own pictures. And let's be more truthful. I just don't get it. I don't get like you were going to come to that person's place and they're going to find out that that's not you. Like, what's the purpose? What is the purpose of this? And you're going to have some type of confrontation. Uh, like they're going to be like, hey, this is not you. Or like, this is weird. I don't feel well. Thank you so much. Leave my house. So crazy. Like, don't catfish other people. Like, it just it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> My pet peeve number 10 is random video chatting calls. Why? Just why? Why do you want to see me on a video chat? Why? I, I, 
I don't get it. Like, I feel like normal phone calls are amazing. If you call me, I will always answer. If I'm awake, obviously, I'll always answer. I'll always be like, hey, I love to hear your voice, talk to you, whatever. But video chatting, I need to be ready. I need to be ready for that. I feel like I need to like wash my face or something. Brush. I don't know. I need to look somewhat normal. And some of the times I'm just wearing a beanie and looking like a potato. I don't, if I look like a potato, I don't want to be in a video chat. The only people that can like call me randomly are probably family members. I'm like, I don't care if you see me as a potato, but if you're a friend, do not video chat me without warning because I'm not answering. Mm -mm. It's crazy. No, stop video chatting people without telling them before. I feel like it's just not, what, what's the reason? No. My pet peeve number four is not being able to answer all of my DMs. And I used to take a lot of pride in being able to answer all my Twitter DMs, my Instagram DMs. It used to be something that I could handle. Like it was humanely possible before. And now it's a Herculean task. And it makes me feel like I'm ignoring people or something like that. Or other people believe that I'm ignoring them. But the reason is that when you receive so many messages, there's so many that you can answer before you're like doing something else or distracted or like moving on to the things that you need, really need to do. So when I, before 100,000 followers on Twitter, I used to be able to do this. Like it was like, okay, I'm going to answer all my DMs. You know, I would, I would go through my requests. I would go and clear my complete DM list. And it was really, really good. But after 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, it just gets really, really hard. And I don't know, it bothers me. It bothers me the whole idea that some people are texting me and I'm not being able to get to them. And I feel like I have this mentality that I'm just completing things. I love completing things. Oh, I'm completing this, completing that. So I guess this is kind of crazy, but yeah, I would love to be able to answer every single DM. And sometimes I kick myself, like I miss this model or I miss this opportunity or this friend that had to text me three times. That is something that gets me like, oh my God, I don't want you to think that I'm ignoring you. It's just that the amount of messages I'm receiving is overwhelming. And then on top of that, I have spam which is people that just text you out of the blue. They don't follow you, they're nothing. It's like, oh, let's do retweet for retweet. And it's like 20,000 messages like that. And I'm like, wow, what made you believe that I want to do that? Thank you so much. No. <laughs> so I hope that I'm better. At least I answer almost all my message requests. So I do do, th I do, do that. And I feel like it's satisfying, you know, to the degree that it, it needs to be. But I think I want to get better at that. Get better at like getting back at people. Anyways, there you have it. These are my current pet peeves, things that really bother me. But, you know, it's not that serious. At the end of the day, I'm just going to move on, like laugh about it or be like, hey, <laughs> I'm not working. So I want to know if we share some of these pet peeves or what are your pet peeves? Leave me in the comments below. What are the things that bother you? I really want to know. I really want to know, like, what are your current pet peeves? And if you share some of mine, I really want to hear what is driving you crazy. This is a safe space for negativity. And um, yeah, it was a pleasure to make this video. It's not super deep or anything. So I'll see you in the next one. Remember to subscribe. I'm trying to get that YouTube money. Okay. Subscribe. Now, do it. Thank you so much. <laughs> Goodbye.